Today we are going to cover thermodynamics as quickly as we can. This is by no means an end all be all explanation, but hopefully you come out having learned something. Or nothing and we won't do this again. Let's get started. First we have intensive and extensive properties. Intensive properties do not rely on the mass or size of the objects such as temp, density, or pressure. Extensive is the opposite. These include volume, mass, and amount. Next we'll discuss the four laws of thermodynamics. The zeroth law of thermodynamics, the most important law, describes how engineers and physicists cannot make an appropriate list. Just kidding. We'll come back to this. The first law states that the total amount of energy in an isolated system is conserved. So. We can take a control volume that we describe, and no matter what form the energy is converted to, heat or work, our total energy will remain. Therefore, if we have a piston and the energy of the gas enclosed is raised by heating, then the equivalent energy in the form of work will be applied to the piston by the expansion of the gas. Here, we normally introduce the ideal gas law. Therefore, this law is concerned with conservation of energy and outweighing the foundation for internal energy. The second law states that the entropy of the entire universe as an isolated system will always increase over time. The changes in entropy in the universe can never be negative. So the entropy, or disorder, is asymmetric to time, meaning that an isolated system will become more disordered as time increases. Similar to the cleanliness of a teenager's bedroom. A bit more ambiguous than the first law, but we normally derive that heat does not flow spontaneously from material at a colder temperature to that of a hotter. If we have a glass of water and place an ice cube into it, the ice cube will melt. So this law is concerned with what we call the Carnot's Principle and Clausius Kelvin Statements. Bear in mind that the two latter statements are equivalent, to which we identify that we cannot convert all the energy of a system into work without losing energy. The third law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of a system tends to zero as the temperature approaches absolute zero. This is zero Kelvin or negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. This identifies that there is little to no relative motion of matter at absolute zero. And finally, thermodynamic cycles. Here's where we put it all together. We at least identify the Carnot cycle, which in turn leads us to Carnot efficiency, or the maximum efficiency between two heat reservoirs. Eventually we branch off into other cycles as well. This could be the Rankine or steam engine cycle, Brayton or jet engine cycle, diesel cycle, and the auto or gasoline engine cycle. So you bared with me and you made it to the end, and you're still wondering, what in the world is the zeroth law of thermodynamics? Well, we had the first three, they came up with this one, they thought it was more important so they stuck it at the front. And basically, it means that if two thermodynamic systems are each in thermal equilibrium with a third, then they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. So if A equals B, B equals C, then A equals C. And basically this comes down to, all heat is of the same kind. Thanks for watching, and if you learned something, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to be notified of upcoming content. Till next time, stay curious.